Coffee is one of favorite drinks of humankind with more than 2 billion of cups consumed every day. More than 70 countries make money on it, but global warming threatens the world coffee production. By the end of the century, around a half of the coffee growing land in Brazil, the world's biggest producer, could be unsuitable due to shifting weather conditions. Rising temperatures, changing rainfall patterns will affect other regions of production in South America, Africa and Southeast Asia. At the same time, new plantations might appear in places previously not used for coffee, like southern China or the northern coast of the Gulf of Mexico. However, it will not be enough to sustain current level of production. Some few solutions to save coffee for us are proposed. Let's go reveal them! The most popular coffee variety is Arabica, having 70% of the world production. But the problem is it's very capricious to growing conditions. It requires temperature range between 18 and 23 degrees Celsius during the year. Not too many places can provide such a luxury accommodation. With climate change, these areas will further be shrinking. Already today, Arabica is in the list of endangered plant species. The second sort is Robusta, which is more resilient to weather and pests, but has no smooth flavor and taste. Therefore, it's less popular among consumers. They are not ready to switch their preferences, hence want Arabica to be saved. One option is simply to move plantations upward to more chilly places. Tanzania, for example, has significant of suitable land at 150 to 200 meters above where Arabica is currently grown. But it brings some problems. The higher the plants moved, the thinner the soil, and the slope is steeper. Water and fertilizers retain worse in this, which may decline harvest. To cope with slope, coffee may be grown on terraces, like rice in Asia. But building them will require a lot of investments that may be unbearable to farmers in developing countries. And sometimes it may take up to five years for plants to grow in the new area. Too few of producers can go through such a long pause in business. Another option is to improve existing plantations. Today, most of them are monocultural and grow openly. Meanwhile, coffee plants are shrubs or small trees, evolved to live in shade beneath a forest canopy. And that's how they were cultivated originally. That's why some specialists see the solution in agroforestry techniques. It implies planting taller trees on coffee plantations to provide shadow, decrease temperature and improve biodiversity, which in turn increase the resilience of the area for hot weather and for pest spreading as attracting birds or insects eating them. Shadow environment slowing the ripening process a bit but it makes coffee beans bigger and more saturated. It also attracts more pollinators, which provide bigger harvest. The shade and humidity the trees provide reduce the amount of water that coffee loses due to evaporation. A study in Kenya concluded that tree-shaded plantations with pollinators produced 10.8% more coffee berries per branch than unshaded plantations. The key problem with this method is that adding trees leaves less room for coffee itself which was the original reason farmers cut them down. They also consume nutrients from the soil that could be taken by coffee plants. Nonetheless, several tree species produce crops by themselves, such as bananas or avocados, that can be sold alongside coffee beans. And trees' fallen leaves can help keep nutrients and moisturize soil and provide nutrients by themselves due to composting. However, in many parts of the world, temperatures will eventually get too hot so even agroforestry may not be a salvation for sensitive Arabica. That means that if coffee cultivation is to continue, the bean itself has to change. Overall, there are more than 120 coffee species, and some of them could replace Arabica on plantations. For example, Caffea stenophila, that is found growing wild in Sierra Leone. It tastes even better than Arabica. Fruta has a better acidity and a more complex flavor profile. In a blind test in 2021, Judges given Stenophila thought they were drinking Arabica 81% of the time. Caffea affinis, also from Sierra Leone, has a pleasant flavor too. Both species grow on a hot and dry lowland hill, hence they can probably cope with warmer climes than either Arabica or Robusta. At the same time, both species were threatened with extinction when found. None of the species can fully replace Arabica, that's the fact. But there is hope to use genetic engineering methods along with crossbreeding that could allow transfer their resilience to Arabica, or oppositely to transplant Arabica's features to a new species. A paper containing the most comprehensive Arabica genome is published this January. But it will take time, at least a decade. It means that coffee producers need to take measures of replacing their plantations upward or using agroforestry as soon as possible to save their crops 
and buy some time for scientists. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck and be sustainable.